Hello everyone and welcome to a special unboxing because behold, a giant white box. Although you might recognise the logo to the bottom right there as Steam Forge Games. Long time ago, uh, I think it was pre-Covid, I backed a campaign they did for Birdsong. Covered it on the channel a little bit, I believe I played through to the finale of chapter 4 or 6. One of the two. Either way. They got in touch with me to ask if I wanted a demo build of their upcoming next step in the journey Bardsung is going on, uh, which is called Bardsung Tale of the Forsaken Glade. It is a standalone reimagined version of Bardsung. They're crowdfunding it via GameFound. I will be putting a link to the campaign in the description box below. It is a tracking link, but I'm not being paid for this or anything, so you're going to get genuine reactions. Uh, but it is a tracking link, just letting that be known. So if you click through to the campaign, it starts on the 22nd of October, I believe. And this is what they've sent me to take a look at and also do a little demo playthrough of. So today we're just going to do an unboxing look at it. But this is a demo build put together to help advertise their crowdfunding campaign. This does not necessarily represent the finished quality. Rules might change slightly if you're watching this long after the fact when the full thing's been released. Um, miniature quality might not be the full quality, I don't know because I've genuinely not looked in here yet. But just letting that be aware that it may not represent the fin finished quality. But we can at least take a look and see what's changed. So how's that for an up close and personal of the white box as I get the lid off? It is very large and it is going to not obviously have the finished packaging or anything because I'm sure that hasn't even been decided yet. So it's going to be a lot of poly bags and things safely wrapped inside bubble wrap. So I might have to undo some things myself. I think that's just padding. That's just padding. Protective padding. This is well packed. And then we actually have components. So that's definitely a large miniature. If you aren't familiar, so I think I mentioned already Birdsung, it's solo play or up to five players club, I want to say. You make an adventuring party, that is more miniatures, we'll look at in a second. And you go on delves and there's a few different mission types. Um, the most basic one, which I think is for, which this demo one covers, is basically just getting from one end of the board to the other. So I am actually, as it turns out, going to have to open all these because they are very secured. But we have a bunch of miniatures to look at. So that's neat. There should also be a rule book and the new playboard ti uh, tiles. Amongst the stuff that's changed, the way certain resources work has changed. The way combat works changed to be uh, more uh, efficient. I think everybody rolls 2d6 and then it's just damage that's variable based on class which makes things less complicated to track, which is nice. Down here, we'll look at these properly in a moment, but there is a lot of the new style of uh, zones that you make up as you explore. It's, it's procedurally, well not procedurally generated, kind of randomly generated within certain um, card draws. We have a bag with dice in it. We have our tokens, the party resources return, um, for the purposes of a demo we can go spend happy on those because <laughs> there's not part of a campaign so you don't need to worry about it. Spend those health potions. A lot more of the boards which again we'll take a closer look at once I've taken a look at everything in here. Important cards for generating the map you're exploring. More boards. All the relevant cards for I presume everything you get in this build at the very least. I'm not sure if that will represent the final core box. But that's a sneak peek at the new stat cards enemies have. We have event cards, initiative cards, and such. And that looks like the wound cards and treasure cards to me. And then finally, roll primer, although I've already been given a video guide, and the new board. And I believe the new board is slightly more compact. The original Bardsung was very demanding of table space, now you just have this one board, I think it doesn't have slots for the cards and stuff on the side, so there's more room for the dungeon itself as well. Uh, I'll look this out and open up some stuff for us to look at now, so we can have this in the background. So here's a look at, I guess, the Forsaken Glade, and every kind of delve you go on starts from this point, and then you kind of randomise out, and depending on what you roll, I think, it's either a combat tile, oh sorry, no, it's whether it's a corridor or a room. You get either like a puzzle to solve or a moral dilemma thing on an event card or you just get into combat and then there's also wandering monsters again which there's symbols for certain ones and then one also chases you. From what I vaguely remember it has been a little bit. Um, but that's how big the board is. I think more or less 
you can get a gist for the size and here is just a general look at some of the tiles so these are connecting tiles uh, the lighter parts are the entryways so I guess that's kind of like a corner if you have to spawn anything that's what the blue Bardsung logos are for be it enemies treasure I guess or whatever there is a larger one as well just so let's bring it a little bit closer try and give you a look at the detail on it and pretty hard and there's one of the larger fight areas so I think combat is more flowing now as well and it can kind of traverse between rooms with you or they should never split the party <laughs> that will only end poorly but that is a general idea of some of the tile types and you can tell the the zone lines are very clear like which because characters move like for instance one two three zones so they are very clear where the zones are which I appreciate and as I say the symbols on the map that's always your start location trying to get across usually and then there is also symbols where there can be encounters I think you randomize from these spots if I remember rightly with the new rules uh, but let's take a look at some of the, the minis let's take a look at some of the quality so here is a look at one of them they are not in resin I think I'm, I'm not quite sure what they're in but I believe the finished things will probably be in the kind of plastic that Steamforge usually use and their miniatures always come out looking real nice so this gives you an idea at least of the quality not necessarily the material the finished thing will be in but let me just zoom in I believe this is one of the new playable characters I think he's called Skull Smasher or Skull Crusher one of the two and his weapons are very large <laughs> And he himself is very large too. And hopefully that is in focus there. How on earth does he swing both of them simultaneously? But very nice looking, very, very dramatic, if nothing else. And along with him, I believe we have the other hero characters from what I presume will be the core box. Might struggle a bit with this particular pose. There we go. Kind of dual, bla dual bladed. I was going to say rope, but that looks like it's on fire to me, so maybe like a spell sword. Whoever she is, very neat, in a running pose, textured base as well. And then we have a little lady riding some kind of skull alpaca. <laughs> it's, that's, that's an odd looking character. That is an odd looking character that I, I like a lot. Oh, is that the same fire lady? I used the fire lady in the base game. Either way, she's definitely seen... Is that a squirrel she's holding? No, it's more fire. Okay. A lot of fire. You could paint that up to look pretty neat. Because it looks like, yeah, it might be like some kind of molten goat. Just with the way the, the texture looks on the skin. Very cool. So yeah, that's another potential character. Then we have... This has got to be a ranger of some type. Yeah, because eagle and bow in hand. Clearly ranged attack is their 40. And I like the dynamic pose, or dramatic I guess, might be more apt. There you go, as a general idea. Put that right there. And then finally, uh, if you're not a tank I'll be very surprised. <laughs> so here we have a shield. Oh wait, there's a person attached. Big sword too though, with lots of spikes. But yeah, this has got to be a tank. Has to be. How can it not be? Very, very bulky. And very neat looking as well. So, I presume these are the five you get to choose from. And it is one to five players. It must be otherwise. Why would they give you five? From the core box of the heroes you can select. But we also do have some generic monsters here. And we might actually have some of the wandering monsters too. Yeah, this has got to all be miniatures here. And I've got to look those out too. So I've looked at some of the generic little guys and we have a bunch of these little gremlins holding, uh, big teeth, holding bows and they are a bit small. Let me zoom in again and hopefully give you a, there we go, look at that toothy grin. He's so happy to be committing murder, or attempting it anyway. So that is just one of your generic little like basic guys, they probably won't be bad to defeat or anything. And in most cases, you just actually have to get one hit through to kill these guys, if I remember rightly. Although, landing a hit that does damage is sometimes the hard part, rather than just a push. So, there is a bunch of these that I've found so far. I've found four of them, it seems like. There's four, all the same. At least I think. His bow looks a bit longer. The others are jealous. And we also have some kind of satyr, maybe? Which will stop defying me eventually. There we go. 
very neat looking. Incidentally, if you follow the campaign prior to it going live, and I think this should be live before that, uh, they are throwing in a, an additional miniature. A bit like this, but with much larger horns and probably a larger scale. So there might be more of these to uncover, but there is one so far for an enemy to encounter. Next we have three of these much larger, well-armoured lads. With similar looking swords to the tank actually, slightly curved differently, but similar size. And they're ready to square up. So again, in terms of quality, that's what we're looking at. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of it. Let's put those over here. And Oh, actually, yeah, they, all three are the same. So number two right there and number three right there. Then we have some more little guys. It's the little guys with the bows, but this time they come in spear fashion. So this will just be your basic enemy type that gets in your face as opposed to trying to engage at range. Standing on a rock. And we've got four of those at least so far. So it's already, if we move that there, four enemy types. And there is more. Alright, the next enemy I found is very cool looking. It looks like some kind of living tree with a fire cannon. Or dragon cannon. There we go. That is a very neat looking enemy. Like I did feel that the original Bard Sun could definitely have used with some refining, but uh, the the quality of the enemies and the variety of the enemies was definitely not where I had any complaints. They all looked so interesting. And that is no exception here, so I'll have them face the hero. Well, I'll just have them face the camera. Don't need to face the heroes. They're already dead if they're surrounded by that many enemies. So we have three, at least so far. Again, I'm not sure what's in this last bundle of these. I think they're probably my favourite so far other than the hero characters. So I think we have one more enemy type and then we're into the wandering monsters included. And these look like the aforementioned wolf riders that we saw the stack card for. So there is three of these, they are pretty large and it's a bunch of those little guys riding an armoured wolf. In the same pose as uh, Fenrir for their god tier game. So three of them riding it, controlled by stick it looks like. Again, very cool, we'll just put this up here and there is two more of them in the same pose. Right there, so that's got to be like the toughest standard enemy you can run, to, run into, it's got to be. But then we have our wandering monsters, so these are just things that skulk around and this, this is where usually the most variety is seen and yeah, these are cool looking. Let's start with this. There's three of them and we have half vulture, half man, uh, half Mr. Burns. I don't know, but it is very cool looking. Like that is just neat and intimidating. Like that is very cool looking, whatever it is. We'll be trying to see its stat card in a second. So that's one of the wandering monsters. We also have a gentleman walking his dogs. I don't know what could possibly be untoward about this. He's just walking his dogs. That's okay. Looks like they're having a lot of fun. If you get in his way, it sounds like it's your problem. So again, very, very cool looking. And so animated looking as well. Yeah, that is very cool. And good for him for walking his three dogs simultaneously. And then finally, we have some kind of horror. What is this? Looks like a Dark Souls 2 boss. We have this looking at you. I can't tell if that's slime or fingers, but either way, it's wrong. So we have this beast. It does look like, it, oh, it is hands, isn't it? There's hands there, hands there, hands there. It's like he's from, from My Hero Academia. Yeah, that is, it's hands or bones, but I think it might be hands, because those, yeah, there's fingernails, it's definitely hands. It's some kind of hand monster, and that is very cool. <laughs> very, very cool looking. See, that's that's what I'm talking about. Like, they're, they're just random weird monster designs. This has got to be wandering monsters. They're always the best part because they're, they've are they got so much character, and they, they don't need to follow the theme of the standard enemies because they're wandering monsters. So yeah, that is probably now my favorite. Although the vulture thing, all the wandering, wandering monsters, they, they all look great. Very interesting designs. So other than that, here are the dice required to play as I say. I believe they've refined combat down now to just being basically 2d6 beat a number, but then you might have like say d4 damage or d12 or d10, sorry, what is this? This is a d10. And that's it. You don't need any other dice denominations besides that. And assuming this is, we're presuming this is what you get, that will have you and multiple players covered 
it looks like there's two, two, two and two. Yep, that would cover that. And then one of these each. And you only got one of them, so that might not be used for damage. But that looks like enough for everybody. And just as an example for some of the Explorer cards, since I looked those out, in terms of how you populate the big rooms, this is the type of thing you're talking about. It tells you where there's enemies. It tells you what else is there. And it could do, it would be like a, a big monster, like a wolf rider, it says there. Uh, where you must enter from, if that icon isn't there, you can just choose how the the zone is orientated, and that's that for there. Next, we have a mixture of wound cards and treasure. Unfortunately, they're not in order. It's kind of alternating for whatever reason, and maybe party abilities. I'm not sure what that rally card's for. I don't remember that. But these are just general wound cards, and then I think you flip them over for a grievous, or one that gives you a status effect. Very nice quality. If this is indicative of the final quality, that is a nice feeling card. And there is a bunch of them, I'm not going to show off all of them. Potion of Speed there, Elixir, some treasures, Teleport Scroll, that sounds interesting. But in terms of what I'm getting in this demo build, that is a big chunk of cards. I did briefly show off the tokens, I don't really need to open them to show you. It is status effects, it is party supplies like your campfires, your health potions, your gems. I'm forgetting one and your fate tokens but fate tokens in this new version of the game are character specific rather than a party resource which is a good change because that means you can do your fancy stuff as an individual character without having to weigh up the pros and cons of taking a resource that other party members could use they've got their own they can still replenish their own so that's really the only change there oh tools i think it was i think that was your other party resource and you use those for certain events to avoid bad outcomes or to get better outcomes and obviously stuff like healing potions is just if you need them because you're close to death so i'm not going to go through each one of these individually but that's the general idea of the amount of tokens you're getting in the bag now that's for randomizing uh, the these tokens like if they start there you roll a d6 combine it with these big random tokens and you just send them in that direction. So this is where we learn if I was right about what that one character was called because we're going to see their cards. Here is an idea of what the enemies are called as well. So we do have, hopefully in focus, I can't tell, let's zoom in. There we go. Wolf Riders, Packmaster. These are for initiative as well because you randomize the enemies into your initiative order. So those are called Flame Spitters, the tree looking guys. Basic Lurkers. Stabbers, Brawlers, and then the characters. It is a Fire Goat. So that's Fire Soul. And then this is their attacks. And then we have Demon Blade. So that was the dual blade wielding person. Then we have... It was Skull Splitter. Kind of ice themed. I like it. They're kind of like one element each, I guess. And then Dawn Guard. Oh yes, my favourite element. Sun. And Path Seeker. Ah, and then more of the generating cards. I guess they ran out of room in this poly wallet. So there's one where you wouldn't draw a combat card, you would roll, uh, draw an event card instead, and you do a little challenge or story thing. Um, that's actually what the sheet of paper that came with it was. It was uh, potential story stuff you can run into for the purposes of the demo build, uh, not the full game. So there's a bunch of them. And then we have, oh, speaking of these cards, yeah, Aspect Battle are the ones that spawn enemies with certain effects, like for instance, um, Poison Mushrooms, that kind of stuff. But then you also have ones that aren't combat, like the ones I was mentioning. Although these seem like these are all the Aspect Battle cards. Yeah, so even in this demo build, got a lot of potentials right here. So in the last bundle of cards that come with this this is the yeah aspect challenge that's what it calls when you get question marks sorry it's challenges and aspect battles so these are just some of the ones you can have for instance running into a will of the wisp nearby grills a falling tree a lot of stuff just befouling your party essentially again lots and lots of potential options so there's the aspect battle deck and there's the aspect challenge deck that at least comes in this demo build and then these are the cards for just the interconnecting what are they called it is just clearings. Trails, sorry, there's one less clearing, but then there's trails. The trails connect the clearings, and the clearings are where you can find combat for the most part. So these again are just how you randomize your progress from one end of the table to the other for the particular delve. And then finally, oh, it's the rest of the enemies, good. So this will include the wandering monsters. So that one angry tree, which was that one, so that's a unique type, I guess this might be a boss, it's a tormented soul 
bring these closer. Tormented Soul. Oh, <laughs> then we have a couple of special initiatives because there's story beats on them, so I guess those are unique. The Shambling Horror, that's the hand monster. Why can't you just call it something simple like hand monster? So Shambling Horror, yep, that is a fair name. And they move 1d4, so that's another reason why there's d4s. Uh, oh, that's because the Wandering Monster deck sometimes has just a generic where it's not actually chasing you yet. It gives you a reprieve. That's what those are for, I remember now. Grief Hawk. <laughs> that's what that Vulture Monster, he, it's just one of those Grief Hawks I've heard so much about. Very cool looking, very scary. And then again, just another generic. So this is, yeah, this is for making your Wandering Monster deck, essentially. So maybe that does count as a Wandering Monster then. Can't tell if there's a thing on it that says that, but it might be the Gravestone, I'm not sure. Don't quite remember, so I can't say for sure there. But in terms of a general, that's what you get in the core box. Again, subject to change based on it being a demo build, obviously, in terms of quality as well, but I don't have any complaints about the quality here. It looks neat, and let's have some uh, just final conclusions. So again, I'll say it one last time, keeping in mind this is a demo build and subject to change. I am very impressed with what is here and the core changes for this standalone, I was going to say expansion, but I don't even think expansion is the right word, um, but addition to the world of Birdsong, it has differences that I wanted. I wanted combat to be a little bit more refined, I wanted the exploration to feel a bit better and they have certainly seemingly addressed that with some of the changes I've seen so far. Now, as it turns out, I didn't get a full rule book with what was sent to me, so I'm just having to go by the um, the video guide I was given directly by Steamforge, uh, which isn't a comprehensive of every potential thing that can come up. But I will attempt this demo build to get from this end of the table to the other end of the table and live. It'll be in a separate video. I'm not gonna have time to paint up anything, so we'll just have to use the miniatures as is. But once again, if you wanna check out the campaign for yourself, it will be linked via a tracking link in the description box. So you can go through, follow it for when it goes live, or if you're watching this as it's live, keep track of it and give a look. If you want to go back to see how the original Bard Sung operated, as I say, I have a series on that. I backed it just myself because it caught my eye. So an original unboxing of when my Kickstarter arrived, and then I did a playthrough through to the end of chapter four or six. It was one of the two, definitely one of the two. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this little look at what is waiting for you in Bard Sung Tale of the Forsaken Glade and look forward to me attempting and probably failing the demo real soon. Thank you for watching though, ta-da for now.